Hello and welcome to Friday's second edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Yes, I recorded a crossword video earlier on for those of you interested in cryptic crosswords. And now I'm going to be attempting a new puzzle by Jeff Wages called Renban Circus. And this is a sequel to a puzzle I did on the channel a couple of months ago. Um, and that puzzle, I remember, was brilliant. It, it, these, 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 both these puzzles are using the circles rule in very unusual ways and um well this, this one just sounds fascinating to me and i've i have to say i always admire jeff wages puzzles there jeff has one of these strange minds that we encounter so often in the the world of variant sudoku and he's capable of just making these really really cool um puzzles that are quite unlike anything you've seen before so we'll see how this is i've got no no clue by the way how difficult this puzzle is um i'm guessing probably quite hard <laughs> uh, it's only had seven solves on logic masters germany which might mean it's very hard um but anyway we'll see i'm looking forward to having a go at it um now a few things to mention before i read you the rules let's have a look at my list we are going to be streaming next week probably tuesday or wednesday uh, should be 10 p.m. as usual UK time and we're going to be having a look at the puzzles in our 600,000 subscriber pack so if you if you've ever looked at those puzzles um, and got stuck um, then do tune in um, one of us might get stuck as well because each of us has only tested half the puzzles so we're going to be looking at them fresh and, um, and seeing how we go but there, there's some wonderful wonderful Sudokus in that pack and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to having a go at those. So that'll be next week. Keep an eye on, if you're a subscriber, keep an eye out on your notifications and you should get told when we when we eventually schedule it. Um, oh, it's the 20th of September today. That means it is the closing date of our Patreon reward, uh, our competition uh, for September. The Hollywood sandwiches, have I got a, I might have a, there we go. There's the Hollywood sandwiches. Um, loads, hundreds of you have managed to solve all the puzzles. Really well done if you did. Uh, certainly the first puzzle was very tricky. Um, it was it was trickier than we'd intended. Um, but brilliant. So many, so many of you have got through it. And if you are working away, we're, we're generous with the closing date. But do try and get it to us soon if you want to be in with a chance of winning the competition. Um, because the video solutions will go live shortly so so we have to close the competition soon um, oh yeah and um, good luck to all those of you who are entering the galactic puzzle hunt which starts tonight um, my team has been doing that for a few years um, and it's always the, the quality of the puzzles is so high I'm pretty sure you'll still be able to enter it even if you've never heard of it before just get you could do it on your own actually but it would be very hard to do on your own most people have it or most teams are, have about six people i think and um you sort of solve over the internet collaboratively and i think it lasts for about it's at least a week so you don't you know so if you if you're busy this weekend you can still keep going and trying to do it um over the over the coming days and yeah i really recommend it it, it it really is it's one of those things that the internet was almost made for galactic puzzle hunts um definitely commend it to you now i needed i need to do a small apology um about yesterday's video where i solved this incredible puzzle by michael lefkowitz um i'm about to reveal some things about that puzzle so if you if you you might want to skip forward if you haven't done that puzzle yet you must have a go at it it's called little wonder and it is an absolutely incredible puzzle. But I just wanted to bring to your attention something that I missed during my solve. It wasn't, um, I didn't do anything logically incorrect, but I missed a really beautiful piece of logic that would have, I'm not even sure it would have helped me to solve the puzzle more quickly, but it would, it would have tidied up some things a bit earlier in my solve. So for those of you who, uh, and there were so many comments, lots of you spotted this, and um, I sort of reached this point fairly quickly, and I noted that uh, what I, well, what I noted was that this digit, this green digit, had to go here in the in the top four by four, and therefore what I said, which was correct, is that this digit can't be green, and therefore I used that to say, okay, this diagonal has to now add up to at least thirteen because we could double five this 
but these can't be the same digit, so they can't both be one. So we're, we're looking at at least 13 on the diagonal. And then I went off on my merry way. But lots of you said, no, Simon, you could have done this much more efficiently by noting that green is also appearing on this diagonal. We could have thought about the other three digits on that diagonal and said, OK, what's the absolute maximum of those three digits? Well, it would be four and three here and four here, wouldn't it? Which is 11. And what's the absolute minimum of those three digits on the other diagonal? Well, it's going to be double five and one, which is 11. So there was equilibrium. So if I thought about it in a different way, and I'm sure this is something that Juggler baked into the solve, I could have got these as double five and this as one very quickly. Um, I, I don't think it would have obviated my need to go on an excursion down here later on in the solve to sort of um, to make sure everything tidied itself up. But it was it's just a really, really elegant point. Sort of a little bit setty, isn't it, that, that point? Um, and I, I missed it during the solve. And this is one of the problems with, not problems, but it's one of the hazards of um, live solving is that we don't see everything that you do. There's a lot of really clever people who watch the channel. and um, But I always feel very bad if I feel I've let the puzzle down and especially if I've let the constructor down by not spotting something. So I just wanted to do a mea culpa on that and apologise. I'm sorry. Um, and... Um, well, I hope I hope loads of you enjoyed that puzzle anyway. Um, now, birthdays. I have a few birthdays to do today. I'll start off with Dave. Um, Dave, you turned 45 today, the secret number. And you're getting chocolate cake, so it's a great day. And uh, I know all this because of Twitter, believe it or not. If you don't follow us on Twitter, you, you should do. At Cryptic Cracking is our handle there. Oh, what's, what's it called now? It's not called Twitter anymore. Is it X or something? Um... Uh, anyway, Dave, it was nice to get your message. And I hope you have a happy birthday. Um, oh, next, Alexis. Um, oh, didn't wake up. Didn't wake up the, the creature in the corner. Um, Alexis, you've turned four today. I know this because your daddy, Justin, wrote in. And I think I've been saying happy birthday to you for a few years now. Ever since I stopped you crying when you were a baby, apparently with with guitar playing, uh, which is lovely. Um, oh, I should do, oh, maybe I should do a little bit of guitar playing. Um, I can't do Happy Birthday, um, so I will do. What shall I do? vignette and <laughs> a bit of improv from the end of um, American Tune by Paul Simon um, and that was for you Alexis um, she still didn't wake up um, and anyway I apparently Alexis now knows our theme music and will will come into the room shouting numbers numbers when when a crack in the cryptic episode appears which is lovely um, and uh, although Justin did note that when it's your birthday, Alexis, often it's the longest solve of the week. So apologies if this video turns out to be long. It's not my fault, apparently. It's just a pattern. Um, but happy birthday. I hope you have chocolate cake, obviously. Um, next, Ollie. Your flatmate Louise wrote to us. Um, very grateful, in fact, that you'd introduced her to Cracking the Cryptic. So I'm very grateful that you did that, Ollie. Thank you very much for doing that. And happy birthday for, the, for today. I hope Louise makes you a chocolate cake. That seems a fair trade. And then finally, Pontus. Pontus, you've turned 28 today. Uh, and apparently you're a big fan of the channel. And I know this because Karen wrote to us and told us. So Pontus, many happy returns. I hope you have a great day. And with all that said and done, long, long intro, apologies. But I had to do a mere culpa, so that's sort of why. Um, let's have a look at Jeff Wages' puzzle. Remban Circus, these are the rules. We have got normal Sudoku rule supply. So we have to put the digits one to nine, once each in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Um, each purple line contains a set of consecutive non-repeating digits which can appear in any order. So if this square here was a one, then we would know 
that, that because this line has to contain a set of consecutive digits, it must be the digits 1, 2, and 3, mustn't it? And they can be in any order. So 1, 2, and 3 would be a legitimate way to fill the line. Now, now this is where it gets evil. Using red, green, and blue, colour in all circles such that orthogonally adjacent circles are different colours. Circles on the same purple line are the same colour. Ah, okay. Circles. Oh, there are no circles on that one. Oh, okay. So that only applies to these two. Okay. Circles on the same purple line are the same colour. And the digit inside a circle appears that many times in circles of that colour. Which is a bonkers rule. So imagine this square was seven. Then there would have to be there would have to be seven circled, well, there would have to be, yes, seven red sevens in circles. I think that's probably tautologist what I just said, but you get the idea. So, so the circles rule is applying within its colour, um, which is going to I think it's going to make things much more complicated. That's, that's my base reaction. Anyway, do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, my first instinct with circles puzzles is normally to add up the number of circles. I'm not sure if that's going to work, though, today because the circles... Let me just think about this for a second. No, it's not going to work, is it? I'm still going to do it, but it, I can see immediately why it's not going to work. Um, 6, 12, 17, 22. don't want to get this wrong particularly. Um, 26, 28, 33. Oh, loads. 40. 45, 45, okay, well that's funny. Oh, well hang on, let me just think about that again then. Because, no, it's, it's, no, it, it, the, yeah, okay, gosh, this is going to be hard for me to articulate, but let me try. 45 was an interesting number because that is the sum. This is a Sudoku secret I share with only my very favorite people. But if you're watching this video, you're definitely one of my favorite people. The Sudoku secret is that the digits 1 to 9 sum to 45. But to take a trivial case, let's imagine that all of the digits appear in a circle in this puzzle. So there is a, a 9 somewhere in a circle, there is an 8 somewhere in a circle, there is a 7 somewhere in a circle, etc. Then that would consume, that would consume all 45 circles in the puzzle. But let's say instead of that, you we didn't have a circled three in the puzzle well then then only 42 of the circles would be used up except that what i could have is i could have two circled i could have two circled twos in one color and two circled twos in another color and I could have one circled one in one color and one circled one in another color and that would consume the spare three circles that we've created by not having a circled three in the puzzle. So there are going to be weird and wonderful combinations. But maybe, okay, maybe what we have to do then, it might be impossible. No, it's not. I was about to say it might be impossible to, to, to have this many circles without having a circled nine. But I think you can do it without having a circled 9, because if I had a circled 8, 7, 6, 5, then I could have, I could have 8 circled 4s if they were in two different colours, 
and then I'd need an extra, I'd have a five more circles to make up the gap, but I could have, I could have two sets of circle threes and two sets of circle two. So I don't, I'm, I'm nowhere. I'm absolutely nowhere. Um, okay, what am I missing here then? There must be some way of... What on earth am I meant to do? Sorry, I'm I'm just I'm a bit lost here. I'm just going to check the rules again. If in doubt, check. Oh yes, there was something about the ah. Okay, sorry. Right, I've not I've not focused at all on one aspect of the rules. Orthogonally adjacent circles are different colours. Right. Oh, okay. Both of those have to be red, don't they? This can't be blue, it can't be green. Same is true here, they have to both be green. Right, so at least we can do some shading then. So this, and there was some rule about the Ren bands, wasn't there? They had to contain, the purple lines have to be there. So, the, oh, these are the same color, but they could be, they can't be red, obviously now, but they could be blue or green um, if there is a circled nine in this puzzle it is not blue <laughs> um, because I can't put a circled a blue circled nine in row six there are, and obviously there is a nine somewhere in row six in this puzzle. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I'm, that is definitely true. I'm just thinking about this because there are some numbers in in the in the congregation of numbers that we have nines, eight, seven, sixes, for example. Nine, eight, seven, six, and five can't be in two different colours. So I couldn't have um, a. I couldn't make this a five and have five circled red fives and then put five in blue as well because then I'd, there would be five circled blue fives and there would be ten fives in the puzzle. There are only nine of any digit in this puzzle because it's a Sudoku. So, so the only digits I can have more than one set of set in are fours, threes, twos and ones. And I can have an extra set of fours. No, I can have two extra sets of threes because I could have, because there are nine threes in the in the puzzle. So I could allocate threes to all three of the colors. Okay, so what is the absolute maximum number of circles we could have then? We could have 45 is the base number, but I could have four, an extra four circles in the fours, an extra six circles in the threes so that's 10 I could have an extra four circles in the twos by having them in it all colors it's 14 and an extra so 14 16 16 or by having three circled ones in all the different colors so the maximum number of circles that could exist in this puzzle, in theory, is 61. And there are 45. I keep thinking something meta is going to emerge, but it doesn't seem to want to, does it? So... Um... All right, let's try and find where circled, if, if, if there is a nine in a circle, that would have to be, we've worked out that is either green or red, haven't we? Because there must be a nine in row six. So if this was a nine, then I need to put, oh, Oh, goodness, right, okay. 
and that's symmetrical. Right, there are no circled nines in this puzzle. Okay, all right, I'm actually quite relieved because I was, I couldn't understand how I was even going to start this. I'm still not sure how I'm going to start it, but there are no nines that are circled. Let me explain. We've already worked out that because we can't put a blue circled nine in row six, if there was a circled nine, it couldn't be blue. Let's imagine it was red. Well now, where am I going to put a red circled nine in row five? You can't put one in because this can't be a nine. Obviously, there can't be two nines in box six. These are blue and that can't be a red circled nine because it's already next to red. And that logic look is identical if we tried to make green the culprit and make it have nine circled nines. It works exactly the same way. If that's nine, you can't put nine here and you can't put a green nine there. So now, right, so now all nines in the puzzle are not in circles. Which. Let's just have a quick look at that while we're thinking about it. So in any single, the only places nines can go. <laughs> this is comedy, comedy, comedy amount are those squares. Now, can we see any, any, anything, any patterns emerging in that sort of darkened fog that we've just, nine in row eight is in one of two places. I mean, that doesn't seem to do anything, does it? Um... I don't know sorry okay so that's that was not helpful do we have to have a circled eight now if we what was what's our max gone down to 52 hasn't it because it was 61 and we've now said there's no circled nine so our max drops from 61 to 52 So if there was no circled eight, that would take us down to 44, and that can't be right, because 44 is less than the 45 circles that we have. We know we have to fill, so there is a circled eight. And there must be one circled eight, because obviously once you've circled an eight, you're going to have eight circled eights in that color, so you can't have a second set of eight circled eights. So, if let me just think about this for a second or two, um, if you have so again, if 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 blue was the circled eight color, then every other row in the puzzle apart from this one would have to have yeah ooh, actually hang on that would oh that's beautiful wow okay that's actually important i think that must be deliberate okay so let's imagine that we were trying to put eight circled blue eights into the puzzle now that uh, and because this row can't contain a circled the the eight in this row is definitely not blue is it so every other eight all all the other eight eights in the puzzle the other eight eights because there are nine eights all overall the eight in this row is not circled so every other eight is circled and is blue so where is the blue circled eight in this row and the answer is actually there because this can't be blue then, and this can't be blue because they're next to blue. So this is a blue circled eight. And now I can't put a blue circled eight in row nine because this can't be an eight. And everything else seems to not be blue. So there would be at least two uncircled blue, uncircled eights. No, yeah, yeah, or two, two non-blue eights, which disproves our opening hypothesis. So the color of 
eight in this puzzle is either green or red. Now, the logic we found with nines, does that work? Yes, okay, I see. Right, so that's very interesting. Don't joke about me at parties. It's, it's an old joke. It's still raw. Um, but 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 let's think about these two rows. Can can these two rows contain two circled eights of either green or red? No, because if I make that an eight, where do I put the green circled eight in row five? It can't go here. Remember, it's the same logic with that we have with nines. Similarly, if that's a red circled eight, that can't be a red circled eight in the row. So, so either there, yeah, so these two rows contain the uncircled red or green eight. So every other row has a circled eight in it and it's either red or green. And that means what? Every other row has a circled red or green eight. I don't know. Can I combine that with what I learned about nines though? Yes, I can. Right, okay, so let's change tack slightly and go back to nines. Because the basic question I want to ask is where is the nine in row four? Yeah, this is, this is crucial. Where is the nine in row four? And the answer is I, I don't quite know, but I do nearly know. Because we know that nine is uncircled everywhere. So the nine in row four is on one of the purple lines. Now, what's therefore the nature of that purple line? This is a brilliant idea, by the way, Jeff. The nature of the line is it, because it's got nine on it and it's three cells long, it's going to be a nine, eight, seven triple, isn't it? Now, both of these lines, therefore, well, whichever line has the nine on it has an uncircled eight. Because no, there's no circle overlapping with these lines. But they, whichever line has the nine on has an eight on and it's uncircled. So it is the uncircled eight that must exist in these two rows and therefore it's there. And that, that must be logical, mustn't it? So this must be a seven nine pair. And that's an uncircled eight. So that's the only uns oh, so that, yes. So that's the only uncircled eight in the puzzle, which means that's eight, because we we've now worked out which of green and red is eight. That's that's, that's absolutely brilliant. It really is brilliant. So now there's an a red eight in these squares. Red is eight, and when we have to put every every eight in the grid apart from this one, is circled and red. So in this box, that can't be red. So that's not the circle. So the eight is in one of two places. Bobbins. I was looking at that thinking I could place it, but I can't. It's in one of two places. Oh, bother. Um, and this one seems, <laughs> it seems even worse. I might be wrong. Hang on, let me think about this. So the eight. 
The eight, there must be an eight in this box that's circled and it's going to be red. So is it in one of those squares, I think? Is that, if that was, if that was a red eight, then that would be red, but that doesn't matter. No, sorry. Now we've got a helicopter flying maverick about to buzz past the window today. Oh, um. Ah, ah, I've got something. Where, okay, look at box one. Where is the, is the eight in box one? And actually it is restricted because it can't be in its own column can't be in the same column it can't be there by dint of it would be next to a red eight so this would be a red circle next to another red circle it can't actually be there because that would be a red circle next to another red circle so it's in one of those two squares and therefore these two squares are not eight that is eight and is red so this isn't eight this is eight So now there must be a red circled eight in row nine, and it must be there because that's the only candidate cell that has a circle in it. So that is not an eight. This, this square is now blue, actually, because that square there, I don't know which one of these is a red eight, but one of them is, and that red eight prevents this from being red, and that green circle prevents this from being green, so that is blue. One of these two squares is a red eight. Oh, bobbins, it's not quite, it's not, it's nearly good enough. But look at the congregation of possible eight cells over there. It's not quite good enough, is it? Ah, ah, I've just got something else though. The, these squares are, um, they're red eight and blue because neither of these squares can be green, look. So one of them is a red eight, which can't be next to another red circle. So so there's, this is a blue circle and a red eight. And now, presumably, what we do, do we return to nines or do we think about sevens? Um, hang on. <laughs> Sorry, let me just think about this. So we've worked out that there are no nines there is a red circled eight mm, seven would be a delightful if there was no circled seven in the puzzle then we would have corrected the count because our cor our count at the moment is on 52 that's our maximum number of circles if if we you know we have three sets of circled threes and things like that but if we, if, we, if we lost 7 from 52, we get down to 45, which is the number we first thought of. Mm. Um. I'm not sure. I'm not sure... Ah, oh, my phone is buzzing. Um, no, I can't deal with that now. Let me try. Right, okay. I can disambiguate this combination of digits, I think. Because now, if we look at box one, nines are uncircled, but this can't be a nine because this would be an eight. And we know all eights are circled. So the nine is in one of those two squares, but down here, the nine is in one of those three squares, and we haven't yet put a nine into column three, have we? And we now know it's in none of those squares. So it must be in one of these three squares, but we also know this is a seven nine pair. So that's a nine, that's a seven. And we get a nine in the puzzle from that. So let's just do a quick audit again on where nines live in the puzzle. 
because now they're a bit they're they are a bit more restricted than they used to be. Can we put no? We can't put a nine here because that would make this eight seven again, and that doesn't work. This can't be nine either. So nine is in one of those three squares. Oh, it's so close to doing some sort of patternage, isn't it? I can't see it. I'm, I'm going to pencil mark the nine into one of those two squares. Oh, bother. <laughs> um, so perhaps it is sevens we have to think about next. Okay, how do we do that then? I can say, okay, I can say something straight away about us. If seven is circled, it is not blue. And that is because in this row, there is an uncircled seven. In this row, there would be an uncircled seven. And in this row, there would be an uncircled seven. And if there are three uncircled sevens, the maximum number of circled sevens we could have is six, and that's impossible. So, so if there is a circled seven, it is either red or green. Um, Okay. Um, hang on a minute, let me think. Can we, is there a way that we can? Well, I suppose if it's red, yeah, maybe that's the way to approach it. If it's red, this row has not got a red circled seven. And this row hasn't got a red circled seven. So every other row in the puzzle would have to have a red circled seven in it. So this would have to be a red circled seven. That would have to be a red circled seven. That's right, isn't it? Because only only one of these if there's a not a red so only one of these three boxes has a red circled seven in it and therefore every other box of the sudoku would have to have a red circled seven so there needs to be a red circled seven in here and it would have to be here oh it's very close to breaking no, it do that doesn't work. Okay, I can disprove red circled seven, although it's a little bit complicated, but not too bad. Um, if, if we have red circled seven, it would have to be here. It would have to be here. Now, where is it here? And the answer is the only candidate is this square. Red circled seven. But now, where is red circled seven in this box? And there must be one. And neither of those squares can be red. So there is no place by Sudoku for a red circled seven. So let us, so the only color is green. Now, that autumn, well, that already feels difficult because a green circle, if green is circling sevens, there's no circled seven there that's green. This can't be a circled green seven now. So in that row, there's no circled seven. Oh, that's, that's it. I can disprove that much easier. Yeah. So, so, so the question is, how many circled sevens, green circled sevens, can we put into those three boxes? And the answer is zero, <laughs> believe it or not, because there can't be a circled seven in this row because of this, a circled green seven. There can't be a circled green seven in here. And the only place, this can't be a circle green seven because there's a seven in its box. So the only place you could put circle green seven is there, but that's next to green. So that doesn't work. So seven is uncircled in the puzzle. And that means, that means we have a perfect count. That means that 
The circles in this puzzle are exactly comprised of the following. An 8, which we've found, red 8. A 6, which we haven't found. A 5, which we haven't found. That's up to 19 circles. Two sets of circled 4s. So now we're at 27. Three sets of circled 3s which is going to add 9, so we're at 36. Three sets of circled 2s, that adds another 6, and three sets of circled 1s, which adds another 3 and takes to 45. So that is the composition. So, so what we have to do now is... Well, I don't know what we have to do now, but I do know what we have to do now, actually. I'm going to write 3 in there. That must be true. Every th there is a circle. Every three in this puzzle is circled, which means the three in this row is circled, and there's only one place it can be there. Now there might well be more things like that that we can do, because th yes, three is like the new nine, in a way. It's always circled, but it's in three different colours. That might make it more complicated. I mean, it's always circled, so it is in one of those three squares, because in this box it must be circled, so it is in one of those two squares. This might work as a strategy. One of these two squares. Or it might not. One of those th four squares. I'm not prepared to pencil mark that. Oh, botheration. Sorry. I thought that was a sensible. Oh, no, that's not even true. And then I was thinking, can I use the colours? But of course I can't. I've only, I've identified one circled green threes. <laughs> there are two more green threes to come. Then three red ones, then three blue ones. So, Okay, but sevens also, sevens and nines occupy the same spaces in this puzzle now, because no seven and no nine is circled. So, yes, okay, so seven is in a domino, in box seven. And seven is, ah, there you go. Seven is placed in column three then. Because the seven is here, and I can't circle it, it's there. Now that can't be 8, or there'll be an uncircled 8, which isn't allowed. So that's a 6. So now there is a uncircled 7 in one of those two squares. One of these two squares. Can that be an uncircled 7? That would be... Couldn't have an 8 in it, so this would be 7, 6, 5... Uh, there, there are, there is a circled six though in the in in the puzzle. So that would be if if that was a seven, there would be two uncircled sixes we'd already have identified, and there would be an uncircled six here. So that would be all the uncircled sixes. Gosh, if you could prove that was seven, I think that would be powerful. Seven, yeah, oh, well, ish. Seven in this box is in one of three places, as indeed is nine. I might as well pencil mark it. But seven um, in this column is now restricted, isn't it? It's not there. It's not here. So it's in one of those, no, it's in one of those two, because it can't be here. Those squares have to include 7 and 9. Oh, I shouldn't have done that, I don't think. Oh, 9 is in one of those three. 7 and 9 are in these squares. Well, OK, where are 7 and 9 in row, in row 8? They can't be in circles, so that is actually a 7-9 pair. Let 
which sort of feels like it might be important. Um, wow. Um, can we do anything with that? don't know. Bobbins, sorry, I'm not seeing it if we can. Um, let's... I'm unsure quite... What else could I look at here? Yeah, there, there are other things going on actually, now I think about it. There is an uncircled four in row six, but we know that there are eight circled fours in the, in the in the puzzle, they're just of two different colours. So every other row has a circled four in it. And I was about to say that means the circled fours are red and green because, because row nine can only contain red and green, but that's nonsense. It, it, it means yeah, I mean, that's totally... Yeah, you can't put two fours into row nine, though, Simon, so that's nonsense. Every other row contains a circled four. But I don't know the colours. Good grief. I mean, this... This still feels incredibly hard. Um, hmm. What on earth am I meant to do now? I don't know. I really don't know. We could... Maybe it's sixes. Let's have a think about sixes. So there are six circled sixes of some colour we don't know. And we know there's no circled six here. We know there's no circled six in that row. Is there any other row that we can say there is no circled six in it? Because that would be helpful then, because we would know all the other rows have to contain circled six. No, it would all, it all, if that was a seven, I genuinely think that would be quite a big deduction. Now, why would that have to be a seven? Why, or put it differently, why can't that be seven? If that's seven, that's seven, that's seven, that's seven, that's seven. That looks right, doesn't it, actually? Um, does that have some concomitant effect on nines, which is difficult to handle? Not, not that I can see. Um, Oh, wow. I don't know how to deal with that then. <laughs> um, sorry, if this is obvious, then... Then that's very good. But it is not obvious at all to me. Nines? I'm, des I'm floundering here. I can't see what to do at all. What else could I do? What else would be a sensible thing to do? Um, phone's buzzing again. Um, I know this, I know one of these is a red eight. If it was that one. I don't think that matters. I really don't. I mean, if it does, it's not clear to me why. Let's double click the eights. Let's just have a think about those again. 
one of these is a red 8, one of these is a red 8, um, I mean, I'm not seeing anything straight away there. Nine in column two is in either this square or this square, because it must be uncircled. Nine, yeah, there could be some weird pattern with nines actually, couldn't there? Because nine in column eight can't be on the Ren ban. So there is a so that's a skyscraper pattern on nines there. Oh, I don't know. I don't. I don't like that as a deduction. Or maybe I've got to go round like all the rest of these squares and label up all the possible colours on them. Like that's red or blue, and both of them are the same. If you put three in there, this would be two or four by Renban logic. Or well, maybe there's a reason this can't be seven, because that would take three sixes off, off the planet. So I'm thinking if this is seven, this is a five, six pair. And then I've got a six here in this row. I've got a six in this row and I've got this six, all of which can't contain, aren't circled. So that all the rest of the sixes are circled. So there would be a circled six in here. Um... No, I don't know. I mean, is that again? It feels it feels too remote, too remote to be able to do anything with that. Okay, what about? Let's go back to thinking about. <laughs> um, I don't know. Oh dear, dear, dear. I'm so sorry. If this is obvious, very well done. Uh, it could be. It could be obvious. Um, and I'm just not seeing whatever it is I'm meant to see. Not... I'm not really. <laughs> All right, let's think about the other digits then. What have we got? We've got ones. Three of the ones are circled. So six of the ones are uncircled. Three of the twos are uncircled. None of the threes are uncircled. None of the threes. Is there some trick we can do there? So three, the circled three in this box. See, it's, I think it's got all of those options. I really do. But I wouldn't be shocked if there is another, another deduction we can make with threes. And then I've got the four thing as well. There's no circled four there. So every other row has a circled four in it. And because there must be Whichever the four box, whichever one of these cells contains the, the uncircled four, there must also be a circle four in each box that's not in the middle three rows. But, but we don't know anything about the color or colors. There are two colors of circle fours. Oh, but there has to... Oh, no, that's not true. I was about to say there has to be a circle four in here, and it would be in one of those. That's not true at all. That is not true at all. Oh, 
What about fives? There are five circle fives and four uncircle fives. That doesn't seem sensible to think about. So is there some is there something more I can do with the high numbers, the eights, the sevens, and the nines? Nine is in one of those. Let's go back to thinking. Do we think about sevens or do we think about nines? Maybe nines. I don't think I... So let's get rid of that. So the nines are in. Nines can't go on the lines because that would cause uncircled eights. There is a nine there. I mean, I think I've done this already. I don't think I spotted anything last time. But let's have another look <laughs> in case there's some um, there's some idea that we can benefit from there. I mean, it's very forcing, actually, isn't it? If that's nine. And that's seven. Quite like that. Nine, seven. So seven's here and here. Nine's here and here. Nine here. I mean, this is tricky. Hmm. Or is it is it some more complicated Sudoku pattern? Because it does sort of feel like, you know, there could be a, I don't know, a swordfish on nines or something. Oh, that's the door. Um, I may have to get that. I just, just let me, let me listen out for whether the front door gets opened. Um, the this pattern is almost good if I could find another row that had that only used those columns but I'm, I'm uh, no I don't think it's there no I don't think it is there Um, okay, don't like that idea either, so I've got to think again. Um, hmm. Where do I look then? I'm so bad at this. Nine, sevens, eights. Is there some issue? Oh, oh okay. The pipe has arrived. This could be the end of my plumbing. Ro well, no, it's probably just the start of my plumbing woes as I try to fit a new pipe. Good grief. That's a terrifying thought. Um, maybe. No, because none of these, none of these rembands are any use, are they? You can't put three on any of them, I suppose. Well, that's, that's a fair point. Is that a point? Because if you put three on one of them, then it, it's going to lead to an... Uh, well, th it can't put three on this one, to be precise. These can have threes because they're circle, but there's no three on that one. So, so there can't be a one or a two on this one either. So this one, which can't contain eight or nine, is selected from four, five, six, and seven. That's interesting. Oh, oh, that's it. Oh my goodness me, that's beautiful. Oh, Jeff, that is. Can you see why? You have to put. It's really. I feel a bit silly for not spotting that sooner. But but you have to connect a lot of different things. 
Well, not a lot, but just enough that it evaded me. <laughs> but now it hasn't. I'm just going to check my logic there. So my thought was that this three cell Rembrandt can't have three on it because all the threes are circled in the puzzle. So it therefore can't have one or two because that would put a three on it. It can't have eight or nine for reasons we've discussed. It could, and now I think does have to have seven because so the digits available to it are four, five, six and seven. I'm comfortable with that. Now, we know that there is an uncircle four in row six, don't we? And every other four in the puzzle is circled. So how could you put a four on there? You can't. So this is five, six, seven, and it's got seven on it, but there's no seven there. So oh, this is so a three cell Renban. So that's a seven. So now this is not a seven. So this is not a seven. This is not a seven. Oh, hang on. That's going to give me a seven here. Is it? Yes. Sevens can't be circled. So seven in this box is now, oh, this is, look, it's doing things. So that becomes a seven. How many sevens have I got now? I've got five. Okay, but look, there's a seven in this domino and a seven in this domino. So there's no more sevens in the bottom two rows of the grid. So there's a seven here, seven, there's two X wings of sevens left. But, okay, but what did we do then? Yeah, this is going to take us down the route to uncircled sixes, which is what I wanted all along. I just couldn't see how that Rembrandt was ever going to do it for me. But, um, but also, when I placed some of these sevens, I displaced positions for nines. Yes, okay, I'm going to go back to my nines thought then. Yes, I certainly am. Because I don't need a swordfish anymore. I only need an X-Wing. Boom, 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 boom. Boom. Oh no, terrible choice of colour. Boom. No, purple. There we go. Because what we're saying now, let's just focus exclusively on nines. Where is the nine in row one? I don't know, but it's either there or there. Where is the nine in row eight? I don't know, but it's either there or there. So the nines are in the same columns of um, rows one and row eight. So the question that we now should ask when you find this sort of pattern is about the columns overall. Because we can ask the question, how many nines are there in these two columns? And I know it's a facetious question, but it's, it's not, it helps people sometimes to understand the, the, this X-wing pattern. Because if I asked you the question, how many nines do you think there'll be in column one of this puzzle? You would immediately say there'll be one nine. And if I said, how many ones, nine, sorry, will there be in this column? You would say there's going to be one nine. So everybody would be very, very comfortable with the fact that column one and column nine contain two nines. But we've just said that these purple squares contain two nines because there's one nine in those two squares and one nine in those two squares. So how could there possibly be nines at the bottom of this grid now? If there was a nine here or a nine here, there would be too many nines in columns one and nine, and that's impossible. So now there's the nine in row nine, look, is in one of those two squares, so there's no nine there. I don't think this is going to do anything. Mm, nine, a set similar logic. You can't put a nine here for the same reason. So the nine in box six is marginally, is marginally restricted. It's not good enough. It's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. Maybe so. Maybe we do have to go and try and work out what's going on with sixes. Oh dear, dear, dear. Okay. <laughs> Let me just think. <laughs> um, I can't see how to. So. No, I'm not seeing how to do that. Unless there's some funny reason that. 
right, let's see, maybe, maybe nines are... Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all if there's some weird residual pattern on nines, which is a problem here, because they're so restricted. But I, c I can't see what it is. Um, okay, so let's abandon that for the moment. Let's get rid of my purple colouring. Um, and think again. That <laughs> X-wing digression was useless. Right, let's think about sixes because this is something we noticed earlier. There is an uncircled six here. There is an uncircled six here. And there is an uncircled six here. So that's the three uncircled sixes. All the rest of the rows have to have circled sixes in them. So the circled six, oh, nearly. Actually, that is interesting. So the circled six in row five, and we know there is one, is not there because there's a six in the box. It's, it could be here. If, if six can be blue, but otherwise it's there, look, where it can't be red. So we now know that the circled sixes are either blue or green. No, ah, they're green because of row nine, aren't they? Yes, that's beautiful. So they can't be red is the point. We worked out they can't be red from row five. And once we know they can't be red, because of this row, they must be green. Because we must have a circled six in this row. So we need circled green sixes. And that is a circled green six. Which means there's a six in one of those. Oh, no, there's a six in that domino. I love this puzzle. It's brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant. It's, it's very hard, but it's fascinating. Right, there's a six in one of those squares by Sudoku. And there's a six here. So that is a green six, <laughs> which says that's the six and the five. Now, well, there must be a, there must be a circled six here, which must be there. Which means there must be a circled six here. Uh, it can't be there because it would be next to green. So there's a... There's, oh, also there's a six in the column, but let's not do it the sim simple way. So that must be a circled green six. Which means that is not a circled green six. It means this that's going to do some eights, isn't it? Because that means that's a circled green six. Which means that's just displaced an eight. There must be an eight here. And we know eight is red. Now, does that... Oh, oh, yes, it does. It does. It goes here, look. So that must be the 8, which is red. This must be blue, not 8. 8 comes out of those two squares. So one of these squares is red 8. How many 8s have we got? I feel like we've got lots. Double-click them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, we're left with an X-wing of 8s. But let's go back to sixes then. I've got, I've got seven six. Oh, I've got an X wing of sixes left as well. No, no. <laughs> uh, six is green if it happens, isn't it? So one of these is a green six. If it was this one, that would be green. But it can be. Right, so what on earth do we do next? Wow, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know, come on Simon, have some inspiration. Um, did it? No, no, again, you come, you, you get these flurries of activity and then you come to the just a, a sudden halt. 
Um, maybe we go back to threes again? Because we know all the threes have to be... Oh, threes or fours, perhaps. Still, I'm still quite interested in fours. I've not managed to pencil mark anything in the four brigade. Um, you know, it's really tempting to think this has to be a red four, isn't it? Oh, that, that, that's what it feels like to me anyway. That's probably nonsense. But it just because I know that every four in the puzzle, apart from the one in that row, is circled. Now, okay, so there is, no, that's silly, that's a silly thought. So how do, how do I get a grip on that at all? I keep coming back to this row and then cut thinking, oh, all the fours are red and green. That's just, it's just bad logic. It doesn't work like that. Um, can we do anything with, I don't know, <laughs> um, if that's a nine, that's a nine, isn't it? You, you get a sprinkling of nines throughout the world, which doesn't work. There we go. All right. That's interesting. Um, I'll take it because I'm um, certainly... So the reason I focused on this square is that I could immediately see it would place the 9 in this box because 9s are uncircled. So if this is 9, that becomes 9. And you can see, if we just pencil mark the 9s around, we end up having to put a 9 into one of these squares, which is impossible. There may be, there may be a better way of seeing that, actually. Um, maybe a different way of seeing it which is going to be I'm not sure I'm not sure we're already an hour and 12 minutes into this so I think I think um, I better move on but there may be a, there may be a slightly su um, simpler way of seeing that but now we prove this is nine so that seems very interesting because now I think this has to be nine by our yeah that that's good because that's sort of we, we worked out this couldn't be nine by my x-wing logic so that's nine that's seven the nine unwinds the x-wing this is nine this is nine and that's not broken now this is nine look we might get it no we probably aren't going to get all of them no we are we are actually we get all the nines and i displaced a six by doing that. Let me just double check. Is that right? Nine? Nine. Yeah. Nine. That's displaced to pencil mark six. So I get the six here, which means I get six here. We know six is green. So that's not six. We displaced a seven here. So seven goes there, which means we get a seven here. So yeah, and we've got, so all the sevens are suddenly done. This is huge. So all the nines are done. All the sevens are done. I think all the sixes are done. Yeah. All the eights are not done, annoyingly, <laughs> because I still don't quite know which of these is the, which, which way the red eights unwind. But... But surely to goodness we're now in a better situation than we were. So we can get rid of some nine pencil marks. Wherever wherever we're left with nine pencil marks, we should and seven pencil marks, we should eliminate them. And then we need to think again, don't we? That's not a nine. But we're thinking from a position of strength. In the sense that I'm trying to work out, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to work out how this works now. In 
must be something to do with threes or fours, I think. It could be, I mean, this is a terrifying thought, a truly terrifying thought. It could be to do with Sudoku. I mean, actually, five is in one of those three squares and five is in one of these squares. In fact, is that a... So I've got two uncircled fives. I can only have four uncircled fives. Five, five is a circled number in the puzzle. It looks like it wants to be blue circled. Um... Wow. Uh, okay. But <laughs> let's try and work out what we have to do next. We've found one circled three, and that seems such a poor return. One of these is a circled three by Sudoku. There is a circled four in row five. Where does it go? I don't know. And there's a circled four in row four. Where does it go? And I don't know that either. And all the rest of the boxes have to have circle fours in them, apart from apart from these three boxes. But actually, no, that's not... So actually, the, the uncircled four is in one of those two squares, isn't it? Because it's in one of these four positions. So the uncircled four is either in box four or box six. So every other box has circle four in it. Um... And these, these are going to be divided into two different colours. So there is a circled four in one of those three squares, and a circled three for that matter. So that's... Cool. Maybe there's some sort of Sudoku trick we could do down here. Circled four in one of those four positions. Circled three and four in these positions. If I could just get a handle on the colour or colours <laughs> of the circled. I mean, if it, it, it could be something horrific like at this point, if you stare hard enough at the grid, you can't put four circled blue fours in the grid. That would be very harsh indeed. Um, maybe five in this box is restricted I hadn't seen that five is in one of those two squares so five is in one of those two squares if it was in the top square there it would be because we have got we've definitely got two uncircled that would be a third uncircled five and we have to be very careful once we get to that sort of count Fact. In fact, that being a five is quite difficult, you know. Let's just have a think about this. If that was a circled five, then how do we do this? Because then we know that the circled colour of five is green. And I've got to find five circled green fives. And the interesting thing I'm noticing here is that none of those squares can be green immediately. And that means... Well, I certainly, I think I can definitely pinpoint... This would be, the un this would be an uncircled green 5. This would be an uncircled green 5. One of these two would be... 
So in fact, that would have to be the 5, wouldn't it? And that would have to be a 5. And that would have to be a 5. And that can't be green, so that would have to be a 5. I feel like I've got far too many uncircled 5s now. 1, 2, 3, 4... Five. Yeah, I've got five. That doesn't work. That's weird. Okay, that, that, you can't do that. Um, so let me just, I'm just going to highlight those in a different colour for a moment. So what I'm saying is, the five in box nine is in one of two places. But if I do put it in the lower position here, it causes fives to appear in the purple squares. Five can't be in, it, it needs to be, if it's circled, it must be green. And none of these can be green. So it would have to go there. By Sudoku, if it's circled, it's green. So it's here. Which puts the 5 there in box 4. It can't be here because, because that would be five next to a, a green 5 next to a, a green. So it has to be there. And now I've got definitely 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 circled 5s. That's too many. So this is not 5, and it was Sudoku after all that, so that's a 5, um, which means this is a 4, I suppose, because it, it, it is, <laughs> that's a technical term, it is a 4 because it can't be a 6 and it must be consecutive, and these two are the same. Oh no, hang on, once, once this became red, I knew, th because, because this transplants down, this is blue, isn't it? Oh, that's interesting. I hadn't noticed that at all. So now these are not, whoa, these are not fours. This isn't four. This isn't four. Blue is a five. Oh, we thought blue would be five from this row, didn't we? So that's unsurprising. Oh, and blue can go here now. Bother. Um... Okay. That's fine, though. That's still good news for us, I think. That's four, so that can't be four anymore. So four is in one of these two squares. Um, by Sudoku. So by Sudoku, four is in one of those two squares. And four can be red, even though it's blue. <laughs> because there are two colours of fours in the puzzle. So 4 is in one of those two squares. Uh, that, no, yeah, that's right. That is right. That is totally legitimate because I can't have an uncircled 4 here given I've got an uncircled 4 in this row. In fact, look at this box. I've got a 4 down here now. So that is a circled 4. And that's in a funny position. In the sense it's on a thingy. And thingy is the technical term for circle. Now, <laughs> that could, it could be blue, it could be red. And that could be blue or red. And that could be three or five. And it could be a blue five. Although if it was a blue five, then that would be a five. And that would be an uncircled. So that would cause three uncircled fives. Oh, this is getting very interesting now. Um, what about... I know there's a circled four in this box. So it's in one of those three positions. But I don't know what colour it is. So, and we know we've got a blue circled four. So there must be three blue circled fours in the puzzle, but one of them could be here. I've got a horrible feeling. We're going to have to do a count, like a count of the cells that are uncircled. Like there are six uncircled ones, three uncircled twos, one uncircled four, four uncircled fives three uncircled six, sixes etc and maybe then we can allocate those somehow to these these blank squares in the boxes um, 
Well, Justin, you were right with the with the birthday announcements. This is probably going to be the longest video of the week. Um, now, there's a fun circle four here. I'd love to know what colour. What was the other colour of four? This is red or blue. This is, I'm, I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to put that in red or blue because it, it feels like it's, if it was, oh, I see it's fine. Yeah, okay. Uh, I get, I'm trying to do Sudoku with blue fours and that's not how this works. Now, See, if you could prove that red fours were impossible, actually, that's unlikely. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So these are one, two, three, and four in some order. And down here. Yeah, we've got all... So the three and the four are down here. So this is a one or a two by Sudoku. And that in, in this box, where does that digit go? It's got to go there, look. And then it becomes a circle digit in one of these two squares. Right. I'm not sure what that means, but maybe I've got to keep track of the fact they're the same digit. Um... And we might at some stage also have to start thinking about column logic. I've suddenly noticed this column only has one gap in it. Now, at this point, obviously now we've filled in a few of the gaps already. Now, so how do we... I'm not sure really how to, how to do this from an efficient perspective. Every column has to have a circled three. Is that, <laughs> is that a point? Um, don't, I don't think it is. Have we, we got some circled sixes, didn't we, at some point? I'm not sure I extrapolated as much as I could. These, this square here is either red or blue. These, ah, that's a, that's a blue. Look at that. I haven't seen that. That's a blue now. This is blue or red. I mean, this is desperate stuff now. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is blue or green. This square is, oh, this is a blue-green pair. Because neither, neither can be red, so these are different. And one of them contains a three. So where are the red threes? I've got to be three red threes somewhere. One could be there, look. This square is either blue or red, and that could be a red three. Um, and we're still struggling, I'm afraid. So, <laughs> I don't, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sure many of you are getting cross with me now. Um, have we done as much as we could with fives? Let's return to the subject of fives and make sure that I've really only got two fives in the grid. That feels underwhelming, doesn't it? I must be able to do better than that. I must be. Yes. Okay. So five. In fact. In fact, sorry, where's five in here? What's going on? That was good logic, wasn't it? Like that digit has to go there, it does. 
Sorry, yeah, this is just a 5 by Sudoku. I hadn't seen that at all. 5 is blue. So this is blue. Now this can't be 5. So these are both blue. Oh, yeah, okay, I almost thought I made a mistake, but no, that's it makes sense that there is a green or red 4 in the world. Um, and 5 can't be, 5 goes in the corner, because 5 cannot be red if it's circled, so that's a 5. Now I've got to be really careful, because I've almost got, I've almost got come up with all of the fives that are uncircled. I've got three. So the five in box one is in one of two places. It can't be red. Yes, and the five in this box. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Good grief. Right, look at the fives positions in boxes one and three. And it's a sort of X wing on fives. But that means if this is five, this is five, and there are two more uncircled fives. And there can't be two more, because I've already got three in the puzzle. And they've got to be five circled fives. So this must be five, and that must be five. And that, when I placed that, it displaced a four pencil mark, which means four is now red, which means four can't be green down here, because we've already got blue. So four is there. Now, if that doesn't do anything, I might weep. Um, <laughs> have we got weeping in coming? Four, so four can't go in green ever. So four is so that's a four eight pair now in um, in this box. So this is a one two three triple, and that's a four by Sudoku is the implication. And that four is either <laughs> blue or red. But we don't know which. We're going to have to have a complete count, probably, before we're going to know. Um, all right, but that was that was exciting. That was exciting. Four is either blue or red. And fives. Let's go back to fives again. Let's not let's not abandon the fives. Because now I've got one, two, I've got f four circled ones. Oh, I see. No, oh, no, I have. Okay. Yeah, and I've got this X wing here. And don't tell me. Yeah, bother. That's much less efficient, this, this pattern here. So either I'm going to get a 5 there and a 5 there, or a 5 there and a 5 there, but either way I end up with a blue circle 5. So if we could prove this was blue, that would unwind the X-Wing. Or we could prove... no, <laughs> that won't work. <laughs> we can't prove that's blue, it's definitely not. Um, okay, 1, 2, 3... Yeah, um, I'm not sure. Okay, so these are from 1, 2, 3... Remember, oh yes, remember every row has a circled three in it though. So that's a three. That's a very straightforward one. Um, okay, every row has a circled three in it. If that can't be a three, that is a three. I don't know what color it is, but it is a three. One of these is a three. Every, oh, how do we do this then? We already know, oh, that's not a, there's not a three in the corner. This can't be a three. Four is in one of those four squares. Three squares, sorry. Um, I still don't think I know. I've been looking at this row all along. Try I know there's no circle four in there, and therefore every other row has a circle four, but I've still not managed to really deduce anything of any value from that. I'm very disappointed. Ah, there's four here, so the four eight thing up there is done. And we know that eight is red, don't we? 
So that means that isn't a red eight by dint of that logic. And that, yeah, that we no, we don't know what colour that is still, even though we've unwound the reds. Unbelievable. Okay, that's not an eight. All right, so. We've got a one two pair left in. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna have loads of ones and twos left, which is going to be fiddly, 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 fiddly. I'm gonna have to deal with that at some stage. Fives and these fours, these recalcitrant naughty fours. How do we deal with those? This square, that's definitely not a four because it's green. Ah, we can't have a four in green. I forgot that. So there's a four in one of these two. Still, still, it won't unwind. It just won't. All right, but there is a blue four in one of these two positions. So maybe it's something to do with the count of fours in each color. How many red fours have we got at the moment? Two. How many... And we've got we've got two stroke three blue fours. So we can only have one more blue four. So at least one of these is red. It still doesn't work, does it? So if that was four, that would be four, this would be four. I don't know. <laughs> just, I'm sorry. I just don't know. Ah, there's a four here, though. Sorry, that's a, that's a little win for the good guys. So that is a four. That's that's a third four, but that doesn't change the counting we were just doing. Alas, it does. Oh no, it does mean that's not a four. So it does. Ah, so the, finally, I found it. That is the uncircled four. The only one in the puzzle that is uncircled. So this is a circled four, which displaced a three look. So that becomes a green three. We got any more of those speckled around? Uh, this is a one or a two. That must be a one or a two. I can't relate those to yellow because yellow's in this column. Um, oh, no, I can't. I really can't. Oh, dear. All right. But that still feels... That feels a bit better. That can't be red. So that's either green or blue. Okay. I mean, this is still complicated. It's definitely complicated. I don't seem to know anything about threes. I mean, I know... I know the approximate position of some of them. But I don't know the colours in the majority of cases. I mean, this, okay, that one is blue or red. I am going to have to literally keep track of this. There's a one, two pair left in that row. Okay, so that's, all right, if I define yellow as one or two, then that one can be purple. And therefore this, oh no, 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 you rotten thing. That one's going to become yellow then. Uh, you know, but that's overlaying a red. This is going to get horrible. So that one is purple. So that one's yellow. So that, ah, that's, that's, that's worked. Yellow by Sudoku. There are four yellows looking at box seven. And that square has to be yellow. And therefore it's one or two. And it's not three. So that's a red three. Well, that's, that means that's a blue three. This is a one or a two. This is a one or a two. So the purple, purple, purple is the way that would... That's the way we roll with those. I mean, I'm, as soon as I can, I'm getting rid of this yellow purple nonsense, let me tell you. That's purple. Oh, that's purple. Where's... Oh no, come on. 
Yeah, that's purple. Oh, that's but that's a gimme purple. That's not a helpful purple. Um. Okay, so what what digits are missing? Three and five from this column. So this is three or five. This is three or five. But how how many blue threes have we had? No, we don't know. Well, I can see one. I might have another one there. I might have another one there, but they might not be. Yellow. Ah, oh, see, yellow's in one of these two squares, but I don't know which one, I don't think. Yeah, there's going to be some question, isn't there? For example, yes, I've done it. I have done it. It's uh, it's it's actually brilliant. Okay, so the question now is, if we think about the ones and twos as a set, there are six uncircled ones, and there are only three uncircled twos. But Oh no, I haven't done it. I thought I had. I thought, oh bother. I thought I could see. Well, okay, no, let's do it the other way round then. If purple was a one, then we can see there should only be three circled ones. One, two, three, four. There are four. That's, that's impossible. So purple is two. Oh gosh. Purple is two wherever it occurs. All of those are twos. Yellow is one wherever it occurs. And now I'm afraid what we need to do is to get rid of our, co our colouring for purple. Although that's become a two now I'm seeing. Um, and get rid of our colouring for ones. The reason we need to get rid of it is obviously these the colours we're meant to be doing are blues greens and reds so now have we got yes I've got two green twos already so that can't be a third green two so that is blue and therefore this is not blue and is green and now I've got ah, no I still haven't got it okay but but can I I've got two blue circled blue twos so I need red I need red twos where am I going to get those from <laughs> That, that must be a red 2, mustn't it? Because I need a red 2, and I've got all my greens, and I've got all my blues. Just, yeah, that's a red 2. That doesn't, that doesn't do anything for me, though, does it? I need one more circled red 2. Where is that going, is a legitimate question. Does it have to be up there, perhaps? How many uncircled 2s have we got? in the puzzle. One here, one here, one here. That's all three of them. So there is, so the circle, the two in here is circled and is red. So that is a one. One of the, oh, we can't put red next to red. So that is a two. That's a three. That is red. And that is something else, either blue or green. But haven't we, haven't we counted one, two, I've had three green threes, so that's a blue three. How many blue threes? I've had, oh, I thought I'd had three, I nearly have. I nearly have, I've had two. This is a one, this is a two. I mean, if I get to, if this solves, it is something else, isn't it? One, three, five here. Oh, no, I have, I've, got, I've got one, three, five, and one, three, five. No. So it's going to be some nonsense here. Uh, these are not fives. These are not threes. Oh. <laughs> well, we know it's not the fives that disambiguate this, is it? Oh, maybe it could be the fours, though. The fours are very, they're very underwhelmed. Um, how do we do the fours? One... Th 
I don't see how they're unwindable. I've got three blue fours. I sort of feel like the fours must be unwound, but I can't see how to do them, which is a distressing thought. So that implies maybe it isn't the fours. It might be the threes then. So I've had all my green threes. How many red threes have we we've got? No red threes here. These neither of those can be a red three. So we need to find red threes. That must be it. Red threes. One. I've got one. <laughs> yeah, if that was red, that would be quite good, wouldn't it? One. I could have that one. That's a possible red three. Two. Where can I get another one from? Nowhere. I don't think. I might be wrong though, which is a terrifying thought. Can't see it anywhere else. So I think this must be a red three. And I need one of these to be a red three. And this doesn't seem to be able to be red. So I think that's red. It's three. That turns this blue which means that is the last four and every other four in the puzzle is now red this is a ridiculously clever puzzle honestly it's ridiculous and that three means this is one which means that's five that's one that's three and that's five and we've we've sort of done the sudoku assuming i haven't made an error but we haven't definitely not done the puzzle yet because we know fives are blue if they're circled Um, okay, so we need to we need to double click threes basically. Have I got three of each color? I think I do. Have I got th have I got ones? Yes, I do. Oh, it must be right because it's worked. I've only got three colored ones, and they're all different colors, and I've never thought about ones. This is a very long video. It That is a stunning puzzle. Wow. Wow. That has taken a long time. I mean, I mean, there were various moments I was slow and I had just asked for your forgiveness for that. I mean, I think it's one of these puzzles where it's got, it's like an onion. It, it takes, you know, it's got layer after layer after layer and working out. And it's also an onion where there are opportunities to, you know, take off inner layers before outer layers. And you have to sort of do it in the right order. Otherwise, it doesn't work and you can't find. So many times I sort of looked at nines and I shouldn't have looked at nines. I should have looked at sixes and then gone back to nines. And, you know, it's just balmy, absolutely balmy. Now, have I definitely are all my thingies only in one color now? Because I could have left something out. I think they are. I'm so relieved to get through that. I mean, Jeff, it's a fantastic puzzle. Friday evening movie time. I'm cracking the cryptic, but absolutely warranted because it's a brilliant, brilliant Sudoku. Um, I mean, I wish I could solve puzzles like that in 45 minutes, but I just think there's too much, too many things for my little old brain to handle. Thank you so much if you're still watching. I do appreciate it. Um, let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.